hello, David Harbour of the Bionic Turtle with a brief tutorial on the Central Limit Theorem, which is a really profound idea in quantitative finance and explains why we see this normal distribution so much, even in places where we're not really looking for it. In a previous tutorial, I explained that we use probability distributions to characterize random variables. In finance, like in other fields, there are many different kinds of random variables. Therefore, there are many different kinds of probability distributions. A very simple probability di distribution is this idea of a single six-sided die. And if we roll that, the odds of rolling a six are the same if the dice is fair as rolling a five or a four. Each outcome is equally likely, so we say the distribution of this random variable is uniform, it's flat. Our odds of each of the six outcomes equally likely. How is it that when we go from one die to the average or sum of many die that the distribution tends to be normal instead of uniform? Well, we can blame or credit the central limit theorem. And what it says is we start with the idea that we have a population of known mean and finite variants, but that population does not need to be normally distributed. That's the interesting part. And then we draw random samples from that population. And the central limit theorem says as we draw many samples, each sample itself is going to have a mean. So think about that. We take a sample of several trials. That sample itself has a mean. Then we take another sample. It also has a mean. Or a summation, by the way. The central limit theorem says that the distribution of those sample means, so the distribution of each of the sample means, is approximately normal regardless of the distribution of the population. It's a very interesting idea. And technically, so we say, the sampling distribution of the sample mean will be approximately normal. Now, at first glance, it's a hard concept, I think, because we're talking about the distribution of the averages of each of the samples. Right, and so I'm going to show you, I'm going to prove this to you in a spreadsheet in a small simulation here, I'm going to take five minutes to prove to you the central limit theorem. First, I'll just remind you what it means. Here, if we have a random variable, the single six-sided die, it is a uniform distribution. Then if we go and we roll, let's say, nine dies together, that's like one sample. And then we pick the dice up, roll them again, the same nine dice, we're generating a second sample. Roll the same dice again, we get a third sample. So far we've taken three samples. Each one, we could average those dice or sum them. So we've got three averages or sums. Each of the samples has a mean or a sum. So we're talking about the distribution of those sample mean. And the more dice we use, and the more trials we run, the more that distribution is going to be normally distributed. And that's the profound power of the central limit theorem. Somehow, we went from a underlying random variable of the uniform distribution to an aggregate statistic about the sample mean that is itself normally distributed. And so this explains why, because we can have any distribution here. This explains why, in part, for lots of our analysis, the normal distribution is going to come out at the end, even though as an input we didn't have the normal distribution. So now I'm going to demonstrate, if it's still abstract, probably is, now I'm going to demonstrate it with a small simulation in the spreadsheet. I have opened up Microsoft Excel 2007. The ribbon is closed to allow more space on the worksheet. And I've conducted a very simple simulation to illustrate the power of the central limit theorem. So here's the simulation. It is 100 samples. Each sample is 12 trials. So if I look here at the first row, this is the first sample. So this is as if we were drawing a sample from a larger population. And that sample is going to include 12 trials or outcomes going out here to the right. See how that first row 
is 12 trials or outcomes. That's the first sample. Then I have another sample. I'm drawing the sample from a population. It is also 12 trials. Can't, you can't, it only goes to 10 on the screen, but over to the right I have 11 and 12. Here's the third sample, the fourth sample, and so on. One sample per row going down to 100 samples. So we're drawing 100 samples from a sort of hypothetical population. Each sample has 12 trials. What's the random function we're simulating? Well, it's very simple. It's equals rand without parameters. So that's an Excel function. Gives us a random variable, a random number between 0 and 1, and it's a uniform distribution. That means technically anything between 0 and 1 should be equally likely. We should be equally likely to get a 0.1 as a 0.9 between 0 and 1 random function, but it's a uniform distribution, just like that six sided die is a uniform distribution. So that's all I need and as we can see that gives us one outcome here, one outcome here, one outcome or trial here and so on for 12. The 12 of them together constitute a single sample and again another 12 here constitute a single sample. So all I've done is run it's it's as if we re we rolled the dice 12 times per sample, 100 samples, except this die has this die is a uniform distribution, but has a lot more than six faces. Okay, so to process that, I looked at sample statistics. Here's where we take the sample mean. So you can see all I've done here is take this this first cell here in green is the average of the 12 trials over here that constitute the first sample. So this is the sample mean. And see if we go down here, here's the sample mean for the second sample. It's the average of these 12 random outcomes over here. So see how we ran 100 samples. We therefore have 100 sample means. The sample means themselves are random variables. And now here's the power of the central limit theorem. It says that the distribution of these sample means tends to be normal, which is very profound because our, our underlying population distribution here with that RAND function was uniform. We take the uniform distribution when we aggregate them into an average or a sum for that matter and then we take the sampling distribution of the sample means. That's going to tend toward normal. To prove that over here even to the further I just did I just performed a frequency analysis or histogram on these sample means and I plot those and here it is so we see this this first chart on the top here's the frequency of the sample means and now I'm gonna hit F9 to to rerun all of the uh, random functions and I get slightly different numbers I'm gonna just keep rerunning it but notice something this is the frequency of those sample means and notice I've only done a hundred but you can see how it on average tends to look sort of start to look like a normal distribution that's the central limit theorem